Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and divinity and wisdom and strength and honor. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today we celebrate Friday of the fifth week of Easter. This Mass is celebrated for the internal rest of John Souter. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass. We call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray, that being rightly conformed to the Paschal Mysteries, what we celebrate in joy, may protect and save us with perpetual power through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and presbyters, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who is called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter, de letter delivered by them. The apostles and the presbyters, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meat of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right, Farewell. And so they were sent on their journey. Upon their arrival in Antioch, they called the assembly together and delivered the letter. When the people read it, they were delighted with the exhortation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and chant praise. Awake, O my soul, awake, lyre and harp. I will wake the dawn. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. I will give thanks to you among the peoples, O Lord. I will chant your praise among the nations. For your mercy towers to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the skies. Be exalted from above the heavens, O God. Above all the earth be your glory. I will, I will give, give you thanks, thanks among the peoples, peoples O God. God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. 
No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. A few words about our Gospel today, uh, this new commandment. This is the greater commandment. Uh, uh, we, there are known as two greater commandments, uh, to love God with all your heart, your mind, and your, your soul. And the second, love your brother as yourself. Love your, those around you as, uh, as yourself. Uh, and, and so this is a commandment that we love one another, uh, but if we want to put it into practice, we must keep the Ten Commandments first. We can't ignore the Ten Commandments and then claim that we truly love our neighbor love our brothers and sisters if we're harming them, being dishonest with them, killing them, uh, that uh, we cannot claim to love them if we ignore the basic Ten Commandments. During this Easter season, we have the uh, story from Acts of the Apostles that tells of the primitive church. Uh, two individuals figure very large in this Easter readings of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and Paul. Paul, Peter is the one who appears in the first few weeks, very, very strong presence of Peter. Peter is the one who is uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit, uh, Pentecost to proclaim the, the word. It is Peter who uh, is uh, telling the uh, leaders of the people that uh, we must, above all, obey God before man. Uh, it is Peter uh, who will uh, be uh, moving the apostles to give the sacraments of confirmation, uh, of baptism, uh, and, and such. Um, and so it is Peter and who is giving great direction uh, to the church, uh, particularly in the first, uh, the first chapters of Acts of the Apostles. And then Paul appears, and Paul appears in a, as Saul, uh, and as a, someone who does great harm. He is abiding in the death of uh, Stephen. Uh, but yet, remarkably, Paul has a conversion of experience. Um, and so what is the time frame of all this happening? Well, if we suppose that Jesus suffers death and rises from the dead and ascends to the heaven around the year 33, let's just use those numbers, it's very, very common, then Paul would have his conversion, Saul would have his conversion experience around the year 35, about two years later. Uh, and then he would, he would be away to Arabia for a number of years, three to five years. It's not exactly uh, very clear. But he is studying the life of Christ. Uh, he has not seen Christ himself. He hasn't seen Christ himself. He's from Tarsus moves in, and he's complicit with, shortly after the resurrection and ascension of Christ, he comes there, and he's complicit with the persecution of the, of the Christians. But he has a conversion experience, but he learns the, the, the story of Christ, he learns the gospel message, uh, uh, and he does this uh, in part by visiting with Christians, by living with Christians, but he's away from Jerusalem, he's in Arabia. Um, about the year uh, 42 or so, he comes back to Jerusalem and he expounds the gospel. It would have been you know, about the year 42 or so. And he, and he lays out the gospel to the to other apostles as he understands it and they give him approval and approbation uh, and such. And yet, very quickly, they find out that some Jews are looking to kill him yet uh, or some Christians, some buddies. So they hustle him down to the to the. Mediterranean port of Caesarea Philippi, and they sent him off to Tarsus, and he goes back to his place of Tarsus in, among, in Greece, um, uh, Asia Minor, and, uh, and uh, some time later ends up in Antioch. It is 
There also that he um, that he's uh, uh, is preaching Christ uh, among the first followers of Christ, and they're there they are known as Christians. They first are known as Christians in Antioch. Where's Antioch? Antioch is in Syria, so it'd be up near the Turkish border in Syria, uh, and it is there that Paul is for really for quite some time. He's there for close three, four years, uh, something like that. And then there with Barnabas, uh, Barnabas is a faithful one, they begin this missionary journey. And that's what we've had from chapter 11 of Acts of the Apostles to today to chapter 15, verse 30, something like that. That Paul has gone up around, uh, he has, they have departed Antioch, gone to Cyprus, sailed from the island of Cyprus on up to what is present-day Turkey, Asia Minor, and there they have gone through Perga, Lyconia, and end up uh, going to a Derby is the final uh, interior, and then they backtrack back down, basically uh, going back to the towns again, and then they sail back to Antioch and um, with, the, with the news of uh, the missionary journeys. Um, and it is there also... Uh, that they uh, take up a collection to take to uh, Jerusalem. And so in the year 50, 49, 50, 49 or 50, they go to Jerusalem. And, and there, and that's very important, and it's good for us to know, because that was the first council of Jerusalem. That was when all the apostles got together. And it was there that Peter is, is, uh, is sharing with them uh, about uh, the, the, the dietary laws have been, uh, there are there, Christians are exempted from the dietary laws, but it's also there that they work out uh, that the Gentiles will not be circumcised, that they will not be held to circumcision. Uh, and this was the first great council of Jerusalem. Peter is there, James is there, James is the is patriarch of Jerusalem and such. And it is there that it's decided that the Apostle Paul and Barnabas will go to the Gentiles. Well, uh, also John Mark, uh, uh, Mark, we know him as the gospel writer Mark, uh, goes then not with Paul, but he goes with Barnabas. And he goes, they kind of go to their direction, and Paul takes Silas, and they begin the second missionary journey. And so what we'll have in the coming weeks is a second missionary journey. And this is a very long and extensive a journey that will last uh, some time, an, uh, a number of years, two years or so, uh, as my memory serves. And my point is, is that Paul is, is doing all this. Paul has had all this going on before his life. Paul's had a lot of twists and turns in his life, and he can't understand why he'd be out in the wastelands of Arabia, et cetera, et cetera, and why he's a tent maker for many years, and, and et cetera. And in the end, God uses him for a very a rather brief span of time. Really, from about the year 46 onward, Paul is being Paul the Apostle. Before that, he's, he's in preparation for it. And he will continue on for the next 12 years or so, 13 years. Is that a true statement? I have to think about that. Actually, the next 15 years, uh, he will be the one who will, he, that is the most productive part of his life. That's when God is using him the greatest. But all these unusual circumstances in his life before, uh, remarkable. God has been preparing Paul to, to be this missionary apostle. And the results are remarkable. It's incredible. It is, it is in Antioch in his first journey that Paul begins to do miracles. And there are miracles in abundance. It's amazing. It's there that uh, Paul is beaten senseless and stoned and, 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 goes, and goes forth. Uh, Paul really, in his later part of his life, he really becomes a, a really remarkable person. And the reason I'm saying this is because God, in his way, I believe, uses many of us our, of our lives. The, the first part of it seems to be rather uh, in preparation, but this last part of uh, one's life is oftentimes God uses us uh, in a very special way and accomplishes rather remarkable uh, remarkable things in our lives. Uh, and so we see that God is in our lives uh, preparing us with our experiences. And you can be sure that this experience with all this pandemic, God is going to use that in our lives in some way uh, to bring about good, to bring about good in others. I, I can assure you that the troubles and the travails and the tribulations that you are facing now, that we are facing now, 
God's going to use them in a rather remarkable way in the coming time in order to make his will be done. May we be as, as faithful as, as the Apostle Paul uh, in, in placing trust and in placing providence uh, in Jesus Christ's plan for us. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us please stand. Let us bring our knees before God's altar. We pray in a special way for the church, that the church is the body of Christ, may continue to guide and sanctify us in Jesus' saving work. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our public officials, that our Lord may assist them to be persons of integrity, to be persons of wisdom, that God's strong hand may guide them. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering poverty, who are suffering isolation, who are suffering depression. May God graciously give them strength and hope. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for those who are struggling to live their vocation, that our Lord may renew their strength in that he has led their lives to become. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for our own needs that we give to God in silence. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who die today. We pray for those who God will call home tomorrow. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Heavenly Father, we implore you, hear these prayers through Christ your Son, our Lord. Amen. We may be seated now. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty. Father, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. 
By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, he showed himself the priest, the altar, the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Carl, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. The crucified is risen from the dead and has redeemed us. Alleluia. The body of Christ. 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 One moment, please. The body of Christ. 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 Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, 
and, un and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael the Archangel, defend us in day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen.